What's going on guys? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G and going over whether or not it's still a good phone in 2021. So let's get started. Now this phone has a 6.5 inch TFT display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 270, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 81.6%. We got a water drop notch up here for the front facing camera, and this camera is 13 megapixels. So not the thinnest bezels out there, and the water drop notch on the front facing camera doesn't help that situation at all. It really makes the bezel look even thicker, I do think that if this phone had a hole punch design for the front facing camera, it would have looked a lot better. And the design of the phone overall is definitely not the slimmest. It is a little bit bulky and feels kind of chunky to hold in your hand. Now it's not too bad because the phone isn't completely huge. It's still a manageable size and the display is still big enough to give you the benefits of a large screen. So if you're doing stuff like video streaming and even reading, it's gonna help a lot. Now, I have the brightness on this phone at 100% right now, and I do think it looks decent, especially for a 720p display, but usually the 5G models of pretty much any Samsung Galaxy A series is just a little bit better as far as the display and all that goes. For example, the Samsung Galaxy A52 5G actually has a 120 hertz display versus the 90 hertz display on the regular A52. So I would think that Samsung would follow that trend for every phone they have a regular and a 5G version of. But in reality, the Samsung Galaxy A32 4G actually does have a slightly better quality display than the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G, so I thought that was kind of interesting to see. But regardless of that, this display, while not particularly impressing me, is decent for your everyday activities. This phone has 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion, so that is actually really good, especially for this price range where 64 gigabytes is so common. It is nice to see one with this much storage, so I am impressed by that. This phone does not have wireless charging, but it does have a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key, and then face unlock as well, so it's good to have two options and the power key is placed in one of the best spots possible. You're gonna be touching this button to wake up the display anyway, most likely, whether it's intentional or just out of habit. So having it unlock and wake up the display in one move is just so convenient. The display is completely locked right now, as you can see, but I'm just gonna hit this real quick. And there we go, the phone is fully unlocked. I'm gonna do that one more time, just so you can see really how fast this is. And as you can see, this fingerprint scanner is so fast and responsive, you're going to have no trouble unlocking your phone. And even if you're in a situation where a fingerprint scanner might not work out too well, you can use face unlock as well. So that's where having two options really comes in handy. We got a quad camera set up on the rear with a 48 megapixel rear camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera for portrait mode, and a 5 megapixel macro camera. So this has pretty much every camera feature you could ask for. And not only that, but these cameras are really high quality too. You can take some real good pictures with this phone. And in addition to that, while only being able to shoot 1080p videos in the front facing camera, you can actually shoot 4K videos in the rear camera. Now for the price of this phone, that's really impressive because lots of phones in this price range aren't able to shoot 4K videos. So whether you're a more casual user of the camera or if you use the camera more frequently and like to take high quality professional looking photos, whether it's for social media or for a website or something like that, this phone's gonna be a real good option for you, especially for the price because you can take some real good photos and videos with it. Internally, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is getting six gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Dimensity 720 5G processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it came back with a single core score of 472 and a multi-core score of 1520. So for its price range, these are 
real good numbers. Definitely not bad at all. You're going to be able to do a lot, pretty much any daily task you need to with it. But for a 5G phone, this processor isn't quite as strong as I expected. In fact, this is still in the same ballpark as phones like the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2021. In the Samsung Galaxy A71 and A72, really processing power wise, not quite in the same league as other 5G phones out there. But again, that doesn't mean this is bad at all. It's just more of an observation. I think it's kind of interesting that a 5G phone is at this level. But for the price range, this is actually pretty good. You're going to be able to do pretty much anything you want, whether that's going on the web or doing some social media browsing or playing games on your phone or video editing. But if you get into the higher levels of activities like high performance gaming or video editing with large high definition files, then that's where you're probably going to be running into some trouble. Of all areas, this phone has strengths and weaknesses in. The battery is probably the biggest strength of this phone. This phone has a 5000 mAh battery. This supports 15 watt fast charging. So you're going to have really good battery life also with lots of longevity. So if you're one of those people who likes to get one phone and keep it as long as you can before replacing it, this phone is going to be a good one for that because this phone has a huge battery. So when it starts to wear out, you're not going to notice it as soon as you would with a smaller battery. So you'll be able to keep it a lot longer without having to replace it. The fast charging helps too if you have a more mobile lifestyle and don't always have a lot of time to charge your phone, this phone will charge up more in a shorter period of time. So you won't have to sit around waiting for the phone to charge if it's ever running low on battery during the day. Another thing I really like about this phone is that it has NFC. NFC is the technology behind Google Pay, Samsung Pay, and all of those contactless payment services out there. And with those services getting more and more popular, it's nice to see that this phone can use them. So in conclusion, is the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G worth buying in 2021? I would say it is. The Samsung Galaxy A32 5G is really good in pretty much every area except the display and the overall design of the phone itself. I would say this phone has a less than attractive design. It looks a little bit old and kind of cheap, just on the way it was put together, especially with the front facing camera. I'm really not a fan of the water drop notch and the thicker bezels just makes it look like a lower end mid range phone. But of course, don't let its appearance fool you. This phone has a lot of really nice features, lots of strengths, including the camera setup, the battery, having NFC, and of course, as the name implies, 5G capability. So this phone in its price range is actually a really good deal in 2021. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.